What is up guys, it's your boy Exotic Cacus, and today we are going to be discussing the Monument to Lost Lights, and specifically what exotic weapon you should buy first, and then second, third, etc. within Destiny 2 for 2023. Now, these recommendations may change if we get a dramatic meta shift in the next major expansion, uh, the final shape, but up until that point, I think you're pretty good to go with these recommendations, if you don't mind me saying. Now, the Monument to Lost Lights was introduced to allow people to acquire exotic weapons that used to be quest rewards, but those quests are long gone. And I've seen a a ton of players, especially new players, wondering which exotic weapons are worth buying because to purchase them you are going to need a lot of resources including stuff like exotic ciphers and ascendant shards and those, especially for newer or more casual players, can be pretty hard to come across so you definitely don't want to end up buying an exotic weapon and it turns out to be trash. Additionally, not every exotic weapon in the monument costs the same, so those price differences are taken into account. So let's get started here with my first recommendation. If you're a brand new player, this is the exotic you should buy first, and that is, without a doubt, the Wither Horde Exotic Grenade Launcher. This thing is absolutely phenomenal. It's a single shot special grenade launcher, but instead of shooting an explosive projectile, it shoots a blight, and so that's going to leave a circular area of effect that causes damage over time. So you can shoot this at a door when enemies are spawning, they're all going to run out into that blight and probably die. Additionally, it is fantastic against more powerful enemies because you can stick them and then they will tick for damage over time pretty consistently and the end result is a lot of extra damage. The Wither Horde is fantastic throughout pretty much every single area of PvE, from lower level content all the way up to raids and grandmasters, it sees play, and even in PvP, you do not want to verse an enemy team using a bunch of Wither Hordes if you're playing an objective mode like Iron Banner because they can completely lock down zones with it. Now, moving on from there, what I would recommend you buy second is actually the Le Monarch. This thing is a fantastic exotic weapon with a ton of utility. It is an exotic primary. Now, that's actually quite important because in this game, exotic primaries deal 40% more damage to red bar enemy combatants, which means if you want to use your primary to slay out, an exotic is going to be significantly more effective than a legendary. Now the Le Monarch specifically is going to create a poison cloud on the target's location if you get a perfect draw. That poison cloud is going to apply tick damage for a ton of damage total per shot. In fact, this is a very effective weapon in PvP, so much so that Bungie recently confirmed that they are planning to nerf this thing. But even so, it's very good in PvE, especially because it has intrinsic overload rounds. So if you're starting to do solo loss sectors and going after other exotic armor pieces, this is going to help you so much because it's going to completely cover you anytime you have to deal with those overload champions. You don't have to worry about unlocking specific mods or what weapons have mods available, etc. You just throw on the Le Monarch. So that's why it's so fantastic. Let's move on to the third weapon I would recommend picking. So we did a special weapon, we did a primary weapon with built-in anti-champion properties, and now it's time to do a heavy weapon. You need something for damage output. So this is actually going to be a tie between two different weapons. The first one is the Leviathan's Breath. Now this is actually a heavy bow. It recently got a bunch of buffs, so it's doing a ton of damage. It has built-in unstoppable rounds. We talked about how useful that is with the Le Monarch. And overall, just a great exotic heavy weapon. However, the one big downside is that it's pretty heavily reliant on its exotic catalyst to do significant DPS, because that is going to give it Archer's Tempo that increases its rate of fire substantially. And honestly, it's pretty miserable to use without that increase to rate of fire. Now, the other weapon this ties with that you could go with instead is the Sleeper Simulant Exotic Linear Fusion Rifle. 
This is a lot better right out of the box. It also has an exotic catalyst that does improve it, but it doesn't rely on that catalyst as much as the Leviathan's Breath. This is gonna do a ton of damage per shot. It's gonna ricochet and potentially do even more damage with that shot. And if you're doing stuff like, you know, strikes, nightfalls, whatever, and you just want a, a weapon you can throw on and you know it's gonna do a ton of damage against, you know, bosses and mini bosses you may encounter, the Sleeper Simulant has you covered. Now, overall, if both of these you get the catalyst for, I think the Leviathan's Breath starts to pull ahead, but if you're a brand new player who doesn't have access to these catalysts, then the Sleeper Simulant I think is better right off the rip. Now, moving on from there guys, those are the top three picks in that order. After that, you can really start to buy exotic weapons depending on what you need. So here are the standout weapons from every single category. First of all, within Red War Exotics, we have the Outbreak Perfected Pulse Rifle. This is one of the highest DPS primaries in the entire game, because when you're shooting a singular powerful target like a boss, it's going to constantly spawn Siva Nanites that will continuously fly over and damage that target. And in fact, the more people in your fire team using this weapon, the better it gets. Additionally, against normal adds, if you get a headshot, it will shoot out nanites that seek nearby enemies. So just a great primary weapon overall. Another great weapon in this category is the Whisper of the Worm. Now, both of these weapons are a little bit more expensive because they came through more complex exotic quests, but the Whisper of the Worm is a heavy snipe rifle that is just capable of doing a ton of damage. It's fallen out of favor currently, but it's able to just shoot its entire reserves without ever needing to reload as long as you land all of your percent shots. So at any moment we could get a boss that requires, you know, precision, any sort of long range boss, and suddenly the Whisper of the Worm like shoots into the meta. It's happened a few times before. And whenever sniper rifles catch a buff, this thing is just a couple percent away from being insane. Now, moving on from there, the next category would be Forsaken Exotics. Now, the first one here that stands out is the Ace of Spades. Specifically, this is just a fantastic hand cannon for PvP. Like, if you are a newer player and you haven't had time to go and grind a bunch of god rolls for legendaries, you can throw on the Ace of Spades and the stats for this thing are outrageously good. And even very experienced veteran PvP players, streamers, and so on, some of them absolutely swear by the Ace of Spades. You know, hand cannons may not be as meta as they were at other times within the game's lifespan, but the Ace of Spades, if you can hit your shots, is always going to slap. And even in PvE, because of Firefly making it amazing at clearing low-level enemies, it's pretty good there too. Another one that I have to mention is the Izanagi's Burden Exotic snipe rifle because specifically if you get the catalyst that increases the damage this is overall going to put out the most damage possible for a snipe rifle in terms of burst DPS. Like with the catalyst, if you hold reload, consume all of your magazine into that one powerful shot, you are just going to crank whatever you're shooting at. And in very high level strategies, like we're talking raid boss DPS strategies, the Izanagi's Burden has made appearances. It's been involved in those again and again and again. So it's something I absolutely have to mention. It's not that user-friendly if you're a new player. If you miss your shot, your DPS goes in the toilet. But again, it is such a powerful weapon. I've got to point it out here. Now, moving on from there to the Shadow Keep exotics. The first one that stands out here is actually going to be uh, well, a bunch of weapons. And that's because a lot of them have access to intrinsic anti-champion properties. The Ariana's Vow is a special hand cannon and that gets intrinsic anti-barrier rounds. The Bastion gets intrinsic unstoppable rounds. Then the Devil's Ruin also gets intrinsic unstoppable rounds. So honestly, for any of those three weapons, if you are struggling within Lost Sectors, dealing with a certain type of champion, then I would highly recommend, you know, 
getting whatever one solves that need of yours, right? So I don't think the Ariana's Vow is like, you know, a super amazing exotic compared to a lot of other ones we've talked about. With that being said, if you're really struggling with barrier champions and, you know, the only anti-barrier mod is anti-barrier auto rifles like it is right now and you don't have good auto rifles and you hate using auto rifles, well then buy the Ariana's Vow to solve that problem. But aside from that, one that absolutely stands out is the Traveler's Chosen Sidearm. Guys, this is a super underrated one, but holy crap, Gathering Light, which is going to, uh, upon killing enemies, build up stacks and then let you hold reload to consume those stacks and get your abilities back is actually insane. After the recent sidearm buff in the mid-season update, these things are schlapping. This thing has full auto intrinsically if you turn it on in the settings and it's just capable of getting your abilities back so fast and consistently. In any sort of build you might be using that relies on throwing grenades or getting your melee, this can easily slot into that build and improve it significantly. Now, moving on from there, one I also got to mention here is the fourth horseman. And I'm mentioning this shotgun for very similar reasons as why I mentioned the Izanagi's Burden. The fourth horseman is capable of the best burst DPS in the game in terms of shotguns, especially if you do get the catalyst that gives it a fifth round. So even in a super high level content like solo raid boss damage strategies, the fourth horseman made an appearance, right? So this weapon is capable of just shelling out a ton of damage in a very short period of time. However, moving on from there, we have Beyond Light Exotics. And honestly, there's really only one that stands out significantly, and that's going to be the Aegir's Scepter. This is one of the best stasis enablers in the entire game. If you get a kill with this thing in a pretty large area around that guy you killed, it's going to freeze everyone around there. So you throw this on a stasis build and it is going to improve that build dramatically. The amount of synergies the Aegir Scepter can create and how good this weapon is at crowd control is just insane. I've used it all the way up to Grandmaster Nightfalls and it's still been very effective. If you do own Beyond Light and you have access to stasis builds and you're kind of having trouble putting your stasis builds together, the Aegir Scepter is a great purchase. Moving on from there guys, within the Witch Queen exotics, definitely ugh, this is not the best selection of exotics here. One that does stand out is the Delicate Tomb, simply because this is so good at creating Ionic Traces. And like right now within Season of the Deep, Arc is super meta, and even outside the season, Arc builds often really rely on getting Ionic Traces to keep their abilities up, you know, often keep up the amplified buff and so on. So the fact that this exotic can make those so easily is definitely reason for me to call it out. Now, moving on from there, the last exotic I'm going to mention here is in the Lightfall exotic section. I don't know why it's here, but it's the Quicksilver Storm. This was the pre-order bonus for Lightfall, so I'm not entirely sure if this counts, but I'm just going to mention it because this is an absolutely fantastic uh, weapon, and importantly, if you get the Catalyst, it turns this weapon into Strand. So especially if you're a new player, you just, you know, maybe bought the Collector's Edition or, or or bought some bundles or some DLC and you have access to Strand and you can get your hands on this, I would definitely try to get the catalyst for this thing, turn it into a Strand weapon, and that's probably going to be, for a pretty long time, the best Strand weapon you have that's going to provide a lot of synergies for your Strand builds. However guys, there's one last kind of exotic to talk about. You may have noticed I didn't go over any of the old school raid weapons, and that's because they were require a ton of spoils of conquest and you get these from playing raids. So 
Newer players are obviously not going to have access to spoils and it's probably going to take you a while to accumulate enough spoils to actually buy one of these raid weapons. To be honest, the thing that costs spoils that I use the most <laughs> is actually the Sparrow if I'm being like dead serious because it's the fastest Sparrow in the game. Bungie did say that they are going to fix this eventually so I digress, but if I can recommend one of the raid weapons to buy, like the first one you might want to buy, it's actually the Legend of Acreus. This shotgun is capable of doing a ton of damage. In fact, in the brand new dungeon that came out within Season of the Deep, to one phase the second boss, as you can see, you actually need all three people using the Legend of Acreus with its exotic catalyst that gives it trench barrel that makes it a lot better in terms of DPS, but you need three Legend of Acreuses to take this guy down, and no other shotgun is going to be able to accomplish what the Legend can accomplish. Also, it is present in the pretty popular uh, Hunter Arc Melee build that's very fun and effective this season, and so again, it's probably of all the raid weapons the one that sees the most play right now. But again, if you're a new player, you're really not going to be looking at these raid weapons for quite a while. And by the time you are, you're going to have quite a lot of different exotics in your collection you can draw from. And so guys, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis that is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.